Hello, this is Adrienne at Chief Architect. Today I wanted to do a quick demonstration on creating some custom furniture. I recently saw this article on Design Milk that featured a custom piece made using the Caesar Stone countertop material. I thought this was a fun design and, and that it might be fun to try to reproduce using Chief Architect's modeling tools. So we have a Caesar Stone catalog available for download for Chief Architect and that's available on our 3D library. So if you scroll to the top, it happens to be featured and you can download it for free and add it to your library browser. If you happen to watch this video and you can't find it, you can do a search here on the 3D library or you can browse through the categories. We have a materials and surfaces category that features all of the other surface materials that are available for Chief Architect. So once you have that catalog downloaded, you can start a new project and create a table like this one. So if we kind of dissect this, you can see that we have a top piece made of multiple slats that have a different solid material applied to them. And then we have some asymmetric shapes on the sides for the legs and a simple frame for the entire bottom. So let's go ahead and try to make one. So I'm going to start with a new blank plan and I'm just going to zoom in. In Chief, when you open a new plan, you might see these bluish grids and a light gray grid. So the blue grid is just a reference guide. Those are on 12 inch increments and then the gray grid defaults to one inch increments. So that's a good idea of scale when you're just starting out. I'm going to use my polyline solid tool and I'm just going to click and drag to produce my first top piece. I can select this shape and click on the dimensions and I'm going to make this easy on myself and make it a 40 by 40 inch square. So my slot's 4 inches wide and 40 inches long and I want to make sure the top of my table it starts at the right height so from the finished floor to the top I'm going to make this 14 inches. I'm also, I also don't want this to be too bulky so I'm going to make the top 1 half inch thick and then I'll hit OK and now I need to replicate this piece for the remainder of the top. So to do that, I'm going to use my Copy Replicate tool and I'm going to make copies. I want 10 total, so I have one and I need nine more and I want to move it as I copy it four inches to the right. So we'll enter a four there and then hit OK. And the program has added all of those pieces for you. So let's look at this in an overview and you can see it just looks like a floating concrete slab. Let's add some color here by choosing from our Caesar Stone catalog. This is in our library browser underneath the manufacturer catalogs. So any of the manufacturer catalogs you download will be inserted into this location. And we're just going to go ahead and click and kind of randomly place some of the different colors onto our piece. So now that we have this, we'll need to start making the side pieces. From our plan view, let's take an elevation just by clicking and dragging to the side of the table. And you can see the side view of the top that we've already created. I'm just going to use my CAD tools for now. These are two-dimensional CAD tools. And I'm going to click and drag a box around the perimeter of these items. I'll use my temporary dimensions to set this at 14 inches high so I know that I'm working within the right space and this is just going to be used as our bounding area for the additional side pieces that we create. I also want to pull the top of this down to a line at the bottom of the tabletop. So to do that I want to leverage my snap grids and I can control the increments that I'm snapping using this snap unit. I'll change this to one half inch And now it's really easy when I drag these items around to get them to snap to the appropriate place. So now we have this boundary area. We're going to create the shapes for the vertical slats. So again, I'm going to use my CAD box and just click and drag to create that first shape. And then I'll use my break tool to add the point. So this is the essence of that profile shape that we're going to have on our table. 
So again, let's use our copy replicate tool and we're just going to do again nine copies at four inches. And that gives us all of those pieces. So if we remember looking at our original idea that this is kind of an asymmetric look. So what we'll want to do in our elevation view is just kind of jostle these pieces around in order to create that variance. Once you're happy with the rhythm you've created here, you'll take the top and snap it down so that they're all properly aligned. So now I need to create another shape that mimics this jagged design. And to do that I'm just going to group select all of the top pieces and I'm going to use the polyline union tool and that will make a new polyline from all of those pieces. I'm going to retain the original because I'll want to use those later. To create the inverse piece to this I'm going to use my subtract tool and grab the original boundary box I created, use the polyline subtraction option, and then click on our new polyline. Let's go ahead and delete the original, so that leaves us with the bottom half. Next we need to create that negative space for the holes in the base piece. So again I'm going to use my polyline tool, and I'm just going to snap a box that fits the space. Again I'm going to break it and now I want to have a half inch frame around each of these. So to do that I'll come into my preferences to my edit behaviors and I want to use the concentric resize option at one half inch increment. So that means when I grab this polyline and resize it from the corner, it will snap to one half inch offsets. Now I'm going to go ahead and create copies of these, similar to what we've done with the others. And now it's a matter of massaging these into place. So we'll turn off our concentric behavior and return to default. And I'm just going to grab these edges and start resizing them so that I have one half inch gap on all edges. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with those shapes. Let's convert these into 3D objects. I'll just group select these top pieces and this bottom frame piece and I'm going to use my convert polyline tool and convert those to a polyline solid. I want these pieces to be a half inch thick. So now those are all individual 3D objects. Now I need to cut holes out of the frame piece so I just group select these pieces and again I'm going to use the convert polyline tool, use polyline solid and check this box for hole in polyline solid. So that cuts all those holes. If we look at what we have in our camera view, you can see that we have kind of the opposing shapes there, but it looks like they're not quite aligned. So come into your floor plan view and go ahead and group select these and we're going to use the point to point move tool to move this into place. Now I need to have something similar on the opposite side, but I don't want it to be a mirror because we want to create that asymmetric look. So I'm going to copy this side of the legs, use my block tool to block them together as a unit, and then just rotate that around 180 degrees. Now I can use my point to point move tool again and grab from one point to another point and that puts all of my pieces into play. So now we have all of the components, we just need to change the material colors. So just grab your material and start applying those. And don't forget to rot rotate around and apply these on this side. So this looks pretty close. The only thing we're missing is a bottom frame piece over here. 
So I'll just draw that in my plan view. Zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm working on. And again I'll use my polyline solid tool and I'm just clicking and dragging a small rectangle that's one half inch wide. And I'll open up the specification for that. I want it to also be a one half inch tall. And I want it to be right on the ground so we'll put it at zero inches to the bottom. And I need that on both sides so I'm just going to copy and do another point to point move to paste that piece into place. So now we have our furniture piece. So now that you've done all that work you can use your tools option here to convert it to a symbol and we're going to make it a furniture item. And I can even set attributes like the name I can define what the top view looks like in the 2D block panel. I can tell the program that this is going to be a table, maybe a small coffee table. The materials are all applied to it. I can rename these pieces if I'd like. And I can define how it resizes. When I hit OK, the program will go ahead and add that to the library browser for me in my user catalog. So now I have this as a new piece of furniture that I can leverage whenever I want. So hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you can use the 3D modeling tools in Chief Architect to create your own custom objects. We'd love to see what you make. Post your ideas on our Facebook page or on Instagram using the hashtag Chief Architect.